we are constantly trying to recruit the top faculty from around the world to this university. And you may be familiar with the kind of battle we have to fight when the person is in Los Angeles or Palo Alto or Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, in this case, we had to bring this gentleman all the way here from Rome. And uh, it was not easy, uh, but luckily he is a Spartan. He received his doctorate here some years ago, and now he's one of our most distinguished faculty, and I'd like to read a little bit about him too now. Our research presenter today is MSU Foundation Professor Bruno Basso. He's a professor in the Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences with a joint appointment at the Kellogg Biological Station. Bruno's research focuses on modeling in agro-bio-ecosystems and spatial analysis of crop yield. His work is focused on extending soil crop atmosphere models to spatial domains at the field scale, and in particular on developing, testing, and deploying SALIS, a next-generation process-based model that integrates crop productivity with water, carbon, and nutrient fluxes in a spatially explicit manner. This is agriculture for the 21st century. Through this research, we now better understand and predict nitrogen patterns in crop landscapes, as well as soil, carbon change, water footprints, and climate change impact on future cropping systems, as noted in recent publications. Bruno, as I mentioned, is a Spartan. He received his PhD in crop and soil sciences from Michigan State after completing his undergraduate studies in agricultural sciences and technologies at the University of Napoli. He's a fellow of the American Society of Agronomy and Soil Science Society of America, and has received numerous awards and accolades for his work. In 2016, he was named the MSU Innovator of the Year for his Precision Agricultural Systems Analysis Software. He is the co-founder of SIBO Technologies, a science-based technology startup developed at MSU to enhance the sustainability of agricultural systems globally. Please welcome Dr. Bruno Basso. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much, Dr. Shud, for inviting me today and to give me the opportunity to uh, share with you in these few minutes that I have some of uh, the latest advancement that uh, is going on in agricultural sciences and happening right here at, uh, at MSU. I will briefly discuss and share with you the concept of digital agriculture. Like Stephen said, the, the future of agricultural sciences um, with the goal not just of uh, increasing profitability for farmers, but we care significantly about the environment and so be able to optimize management to increase um, profit for farmers, but uh, reducing the environmental impact. And one thing that you probably may know, um, we have had self-driving tractors since the last uh, 20 years or so, when the uh, GPS was available for civilian use. Uh, initially, there was a, um, the military wouldn't allow. The, the delus delusion of precision was removed. So now, tractors drive um, by themselves in the field, and they're able to collect information about plants performances, basically the ultimate goal, the yield. So we are now have large, large amount of data, which often goes under, you know, the meaning of uh, digital, uh, you know, agriculture or big data in agriculture. The problem is, as you can imagine, the difficulties of farmers handling this information and be able to have a good use. For us, this is just uh, life has changed in science with the, the possibility of bringing advanced technology in agricultural system. And so digital agriculture is not just pr producing pretty map. Um, basically, it's the monitoring component, but it's how we convert those colorful map into value for, for a farmers and for the community, for, for the public. So we have developed a technology that looks at this data that come from digital sensors mounted on the combines, on the, the tractor, and they are analyzed in a way that we assess the spatial and temporal variation. So how different is one part of the field versus another and how that part of the field remains constant over time. So if you have an individual always performing well, you treat that part of the field completely different than another part of the field where there is no response. And that's the, ter the term precision agriculture because it means doing the right thing at the right place in the right manner at the right time. 
So it's a little bit the apotheosis of, you know, agricultural sciences. And so the technology has allowed us to quantify, because we understand variation in space, to quantify how much nitrogen is used by the plant, the good areas versus the bad areas. And to, to bring some simple analogy, it's like if you know that we, we cut ourselves on, on a finger, we wouldn't dive into a disinfectant. We just put exactly in that spot what we need to do. And also, if you have symptoms of, you know, a stomach and, you know, tummy pain, you wouldn't use an aspirin. The difference is, is that we're able to communicate. Well, the good thing is plants communicate as well. And so the, the, the innovation that I basically brought in and it's been commercialized, as you'll see a little bit later, is that we understand what plants want us to see. And plants reflect that symptom of well-being or suffering, how they reflect the light, the, the electromagnetic spectrum. So if you see a lighter green from a sensor, you may know most of my work is done using uh, UAV works, uh, basically this advanced uh, unmanned aerial vehicle. So when you bring them into a system model, then you understand space and time. And, and so in that case, you don't treat the plants for the wrong symptom, but you do the right thing at the right time at the right place by optimizing resources. So I developed a model that I have, I would like to say a few words. The predecessor of that model was also developed here at Michigan State in the uh, early 80s, but it was a work of the intelligence of the US that pushed for a process-based model to predict how much wheat was produced in Russia during the Cold War. That was more of a, an initial phase of modeling. Now it's much, much more complex. So when my former professor, another distinguished and endowed professor at Michigan State, I, he inherited that the initial uh, model and advanced by creating SALUS, a system approach for land use sustainability. And so the linkage and the unique way of using UAV to understand spatial variation linked to a dynamic model that understands changes in time, then we are able to produce in a more common term an RX, basically a prescription map be able to give the one part of the field gets 80,000 pounds per acre and the other will get 150 with the maximum efficiency in, in input. So the technology is able to do anything and this farmer does the right thing. He puts an helmet. That's not a Photoshop. It's be able to, to reach that level of precision. It's obviously, it's, you know, for show, but the engineering has been ahead of the game, likely the diagnostic tools and the science is catching up to be able to do the right thing also. As, as always also in medicine, it's a lot easier to understand, you know, a man-made system, I mean engineering, but the complexity of the biology, it's really hard. So I work on the component of designing prescription maps for uh, globally, basically. Um, this is a very, just briefly a procedure that how these maps get disintegrated. You, we first see how different are the individuals, the plants from each other, how different they are throughout the years. So the, if that part of the field is always good, it, it gets a, a, an emblem of high and stable. And the others that they fluctuate from one year to the next, they are unstable. So by assessing that, I've pr developed the procedure for all, for every single field in the United States um, that has been obviously, as you know, commercialized and taken um, and is doing extremely well. Um, so we quantify how much nitrogen pollution occurs from every single field. Um, and this is some numbers. Basically, we quantify that 1.4 teragrams of nitrogen go to the Gulf of Mexico every year equivalent to 600 uh, million US dollars per year. This is only from the unused fertilizer and how uh, 1.1 billion uh, gigajoule of energy are emitted uh, in, uh, in the atmosphere. And the interesting thing is that's basically results of the model to capture the variation in every single thing in terms of, of yield. Farmers are interested in seeing profit. So when they see, they always say, I wasn't ready to see this map because it, no one wants to see how inefficient they could be. And likely, but they're very happy. The one they work with me, actually, they're 
much more privilege to be able to have a, a you know a tailored explanation very precisely but this technology is obviously scalable throughout you know anyone in the US and the graph on the right just simply you don't need to put, pay too much attention it's basically a dual criteria we don't just carry carry just about the environment um, as well as the profit so that's the amount that will be varied within the field through the zones by finding the exact trade-off point so I know you have been very helpful to me and I'm very grateful for the, the award of the foundation that I had your support in investing I must say that since Dr. Xu came on board this program of MSU uh, technology transfer was really the trigger to invest in the technology that was later became a commercial now is a it's a startup uh, evaluated hundreds of um, millions and um, it's with patents we received uh, the Forbes award recently significant amount of investment I had the privilege one of the investors is uh, Vice President Al Gore so I had the opportunity I was invited uh, to give a one-to-one -one talk for two hours with him um, and a dinner afterward uh, recently with uh, the Buffett uh, family, they're also part of uh, a company that they sit on the board but they knew about my work and they invited me to give a talk to them. Very grateful for the Innovation of the Year award. But I really get most of the satisfaction when I help. I do a lot of international work including in Africa. I just came back from Tanzania. I developed a crop forecasting system. The country doesn't know how much food they produce. So this was a UN uh, FAO work. And so I wanted to put that picture with the baby because you, most of you have been through those uh, remote areas in Africa and you got to balance the two. You value the meeting with Al Gore, but in the end um, that gives a significant amount of satisfaction uh, that the work is making a difference uh, throughout uh, globally. Obviously this wouldn't be possible without uh, the work of the students and uh, the investors, the funding. Uh, luckily, I have fortune to run a multi-million dollar lab and several students. So I really thank you for having me at Michigan State to come back after 15 years. I went back to, to Italy and uh, I always say I left Rome for East Lansing. I really left Rome for Michigan State. And so thank you very much indeed for your attention.